You're watching Red with the Man. This is the video I promised you guys I would do on the WMO's annual meeting. So basically what this is, for those of you who don't know, this is an annual meeting that is conducted by the World Meteorological Organization every single year. This meeting always takes place in the middle of March, except for last year they just decided to skip it all together because of the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically what they do every year at this meeting is they take a look at the previous year's hurricane season. This year, because they skipped last year, they took a look at 2019 as well as 2020, and they look at, first of all, they decide which names they want to retire because those hurricanes were way too destructive to keep using every six years. Occasionally, they'll do some post-tropical analysis. That's how we found out that Hurricane Michael was indeed a Category 5 hurricane, not just a high-end Category 4, and they also take up some proposals and decide what to do on those. For example... The proposal to push the start date for hurricane season back to May 15th, that ultimately failed at this meeting. They decided to keep it June 1st. So it appears that in 2019, the only name they decided to retire was Dory. And in case you don't remember, that was the storm that had something ridiculous like 185 mile an hour winds. And it just stalled over the Bahamas for days and days and days. We thought it might hit Florida. We thought it might bring them some hurricane force winds or maybe scrape them just a little bit. Turned out not to really do any of that. Made landfall eventually in the Outer Banks, North Carolina as a category two. This year they decided to retire Hurricane Laura from the list and that was a storm that hit southwestern Louisiana. If you live down that part of the state, you know what I'm talking about, you're probably still clean up from it. Hit uh, some very populated areas, Cameron, Lake Charles, and it was the strongest hurricane to ever hit that part of the state. 150 mile an hour sustained winds. The only thing relatively comparable to that in that location was Hurricane Rita from 15 years ago. And the other two are two Greek names, and this is the first time that's ever happened in the history that we've been naming these tropical cyclones. Basically what happened was we ran out of names about halfway through the season. We went through all 21 on that first list, so we had to start dipping into the Greek list. And as a result, we got two storms out of those names that were destructive enough that the WMO felt they needed to be retired. Iota and Ida both did serious damage in Nicaragua, so as a result, those names were kicked off the list. And now the WMO has made the decision that we will not be using any Greek names because they've been pulled into the picture here and because of certain communication issues with that. So now they are working on a new list that they will be developing and using whenever something like this happens again, where we run out of all 21 names on the original list. Okay, so I think I pretty much covered all of the main points from this article. If you want to read the full article, you can at the National Hurricane Center's website, nhc.noaa.gov. Please like this video down below and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm not too far from 100 subs, so I'd like to get there eventually. And hopefully we can get to 1,000 someday and get this channel monetized and do some live streams too. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more in a couple of days as we get some severe weather coming in in the middle of the week.